very much and call again. Hey, you want some help, Mr. Gildersleeve? You certainly don't have a very large selection here, Peavy. Well, I have some more right over there. Oh. Fifty cents and up. Hey. Well, on second thought, I should be able to find something here. Yeah, I'll just look it over more carefully. All right. Oh, here's a pretty card. Deepest condolences on the loss of your... <laughs> Sympathy card, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, well, this is more like it. To the sweetest girl I know. I love you when you're good. I love you when you're bad. So happy, happy birthday from your old grand... <laughs> Woody, if you just tell me what the occasion is, Mr. Gildersleeve, maybe I could suggest something. It's a very special occasion, Peavy. Now, I'm looking for a card for a young lady who may turn out to be the future Mrs. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Hmm. Better go back to sympathy cards. Peavy. <laughs> There's just nothing here, Peavy. Well, now, if you're trying to impress her, why not give her a, uh, oh, nice box of candy? No. Or some perfume. I already have a gift for her, Peavy. A very expensive gift, it so happens. I'm just looking for an appropriate card to go with it. Well, buy some note paper and write your own message. You mean write my own poem? Well, no, it doesn't have to be a poem. It, just as long as it has the personal touch. You well, know, in the case of Amy Miller, it would have to be a poem. Uh, she belongs to the Summerfield Ladies Poetry Circle. Oh, well, in that case, then, you better not. <laughs> no, I will. Faint heart never won fair lady. Hey, give me a box of your best note paper. Hmm. You want the uh, perfume kind? Oh, no, that's not manly enough. I'll just sprinkle some aftershave lotion on it. You better give me two boxes. <laughs> Look, you'll need two boxes. There's a hundred sheets in every box. I realize that, PB. But the mayor just put through a new regulation that the department heads have to make three copies of everything. Oh, that ought to do it. Mr. Gildersleeve, you working so hard, I thought I'd bring you a cup of coffee. Well, thank you, Bertie. Would you like a nice piece of chocolate cake to go with it? No, no, thank you. Why not? Well, in the first place, I'm getting a little too fat. You're getting a little too fat in the second place, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a big deal you're working on, Unky? Hey, the biggest. Are you going to sign a contract with somebody? Yeah, I might, my dear. I just might. Can I read the letter, Anki? I'd like to see how you go about handling a big affair. Marjorie, please. There's some things your old uncle can't share with you children. I'm sure you can understand that. <laughs> Holy smokes! Why do you get a load of this? Leroy, put that down. No, oh, this is too good to put down. Please, you hear this, Marjorie? Leroy! I told you to put that down. Eyes. Can't you see I love you truly? To speak so soon may not be wise, but love has made me such a foolie. Leroy! Listen, Miss Marge. Being there beside you is all that's to me important. And if you feel as I do, I'll be your own Throckmorton. Throckmorton? Yeah, I took a little poetic license. Is that the end? Ah. Uh -uh. So I give thee my love, this locket. It's shaped just like a heart. I pray thee never hock it or our love will fall apart. That's the end. But you're so right. <laughs> if I hadn't read it myself, I never would have believed it. Yeah, I didn't think your old uncle had it in him, did you? Uncle Mort, you're not planning to send that to some girl, are you? Not some girl, Marjorie. The girl, whose name I don't want to divulge at the moment. Amy Miller. How did you know, Lou? You're not serious. You're not planning to send that to Amy Miller. Maybe he's trying to get rid of her. I am not <laughs> trying to get rid of her. It so happens that Amy Miller belongs to a poetry club. She'll appreciate it if some other people don't. When she opens the package and sees the locket, and my poem, she'll be swept right off her feet. Why don't you just send her the locket in the car? This is from a friend. Leroy, you're too young to understand these things, but mark my word, it's the poem that'll do the trick. Oh, but Amy may not appreciate it. Marjorie, I don't want to discuss it any further. All this creative effort has made me hungry. I wonder if Bertie still has that cake. I think I'll go and ask her. Boy, when Amy Miller reads that poem, Unk's gonna be a dead duck. I know. But for Anki's sake, we're not going to let that happen. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to find a good poem and substitute it for Uncle Mort's... Uh, Uncle Mort's... Uh, thing? Thank you. Oh, here's one. 
How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. Oh, that's fine. Oh, hey, that's real cool. Who wrote it? Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Oh. <laughs> Say, if Unk's girl is such a poetry expert, won't you recognize the poem? Well, that's a chance we'll just have to take. I sure hope it works. <laughs> Yes, it's about to leave, my boy. Oh, well, goodbye, Unc. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you later. Bye, Unc. Goodbye. How do I love you? Let me count the ways. Beautiful, simply beautiful. How's tricks? Not much. <laughs> Control yourself. Forgive me, Throckmorton. I just couldn't help it. You're wearing my locket? Oh, oh yes, the locket is lovely. It's a poem. It's a poem. Oh, no. do you like it? Like it? It's, it's a mess. I've never been so thrilled in all my life. It did have a nice ring to it. Did, it? did you like the line about... Oh, I loved every line, every word. Such graceful imagery. Such subtle phrasing. Well, how do you do it? Well, I just write down the first thing that pops into my mind. It's unbelievable. I've underestimated you, Throckmorton. I never dreamed you were so deep, so sensitive. Mm. I'm honored to think you wrote this poem just for me. Oh, there's plenty more where that came from. I told Miss Barnaby about you. Uh, who's Miss Barnaby? The head of my poetry club. She's just dying to read your poem. Oh, she is. Would you mind terribly if I showed it to her? Well, I don't know any reason why. I realize it's a bit well, personal, but... Oh, I hadn't thought of that. If Peavy or the gang down to City Hall get wind of it, I might be in for a lot of ribbing. But on the other hand, maybe it isn't fair to keep it all to myself. Well, why isn't it fair? Because a poem like this shouldn't belong to just one person. It should belong to the world. Maybe. I don't feel about the world like I feel about you. <laughs> Thank you, Throckmorton. But much as we'd like to, we can't be selfish. Well, you may be right. Oh, I know I'm right. A, a true genius only comes along once every hundred years. It's his obligation to step forward and be recognized. Amy, when you put it like that, I have no alternative. I'll call Miss Barnaby and see if I can show it to her tonight. Don't, uh, don't forget to show her the lock, too. <laughs> I certainly hope we got away with it. Oh, relax. If Amy kicked Doc out of the house, he'd have been home long ago. I hope she didn't show the poem to Uncle Mort. Well, all she doesn't know it was written by that lady. What's her name again? Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Hmm. Good afternoon, Marjorie. Leroy. Hi, Unc. How'd everything go? It couldn't have gone better. Oh, that's wonderful. You don't know how worried we were. Well, nothing to worry about, Marjorie. Just because you and Leroy didn't like my poem. What makes you think we didn't like it? Now, don't try to pretend, Leroy. Don't try to hop on the bandwagon just because Miss Amy Miller thinks the poem she read is one of the greatest of all time. It is. Amy was so impressed she's going to show it to Miss Barnaby, the head of her poetry club. Oh, no. Oh, yes, tonight. And for your information, Miss Barnaby is a true scholar. She's an expert on Keats, Milton, Browning, Shelley. Did you say Browning? Elizabeth Barrett Browning? That's right, Leroy. But when Miss Barnaby puts my poem alongside of one of Mrs. Browning's, she may be in for a big surprise. <laughs> Bertie! You two, you haven't even touched 
missed your dinner. I'm not hungry. Me either. Well, I don't care whether you're hungry or not. You eat your dinner. You've got to have your vitamins and proteins, and you can't get them if you don't eat. All right, Bertie. Because there's one thing I know. If you want your vitamins and proteins, you've got to eat. If you just sit there and look at them, you know what'll happen? We won't get our vitamins and proteins. Yes, and you need your vitamins and proteins, don't they, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, they certainly do. So you two stop daydreaming and eat. And we'll consider the whole thing closed about the vitamins and the proteins. Bertie, I think it's about 7 o'clock. <laughs> In just about an hour, Amy's going to show my poem to Miss Barnaby. And I wonder what you'll think of me. Uh, I think I'll take a little walk. And I think I'll go with you. How about strolling over to Alaska? You two stay right here. You wouldn't want to miss your old uncle's moment of triumph, would you? You finish your dinner. I'll be in the living room. I think I should prepare a statement for the press. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Anki, when Amy finds out he didn't really write that poem... And she'll think he's a big phony and she'll never speak to him again. And he'll never speak to us again. Oh, this is awful. I was getting ready to ask him to raise my allowance. <laughs> Amy! I thought you were going to Miss Barnaby's. Oh, I am, Throckmorton. I just stopped by to talk to you about your poem. I've been reading it over and over. And all of a sudden, something dawned on me. No? Oh, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, you should be ashamed of yourself. I should? You forgot to give your poem a title. Well, by George, so I did. <laughs> Let me think. Yeah, I know. I'll call it. To Amy. Oh, Throckmorton. <laughs> Hello, Miss Miller. Hello, Marjorie. Leroy. Hello. Uh, won't you uh, sit down, Amy? Oh, thank you. Do the children know about your poem? Oh, yes. I couldn't keep a secret from these two. <laughs> you must be very proud. I'll bet you're anxious for your uncle to share his talent with the world. I don't know, Miss Miller. I don't think I should interfere in Unky's affairs. <laughs> Neither do I. However, if someone wrote me a beautiful poem, I'd want it all to myself. I wouldn't want to share it with anyone. Neither would I. It's strange you should say that, Marjorie. Uh, Amy and I were... And if I wrote a poem for someone special, I wouldn't want it read by a total stranger. Uh, neither would I. Mm. After all, the total stranger might not understand. She might think it's just a lot of words on a piece of paper. Neither would I. <laughs> you think Miss Barnaby might not understand what Throckmorton meant? I can't say for sure, but I think there is a good chance of it. Well, I never thought of that. Amy, Margie's right. I think you should call Miss Barnaby and tell her that you've changed your mind. If you think that's best, Throckmorton. I'll call her right now. Excuse me. Yo, Amy, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Uh oh We're afraid that if Miss Barnaby reads my poem, she won't understand it, right? Right. Yeah, but if I read it to her aloud, I could make her understand it. But Uncle Mort... It's simply a matter of stressing the right words and phrases. Yeah, I remember a memo I once wrote to the mayor. He couldn't make head or tail of it until I read it to him. Oh, Strockburton, that's a wonderful idea. You and I will go over to Miss Barnaby's together. Amy, I've got another idea. We should have quit when we were ahead. If the idea is to share my poem with the world, why limit it to Miss Barnaby? What do you mean? Well, why not read it for the whole poetry club and a few other selected guests? Make a party out of it. We can hold a party at my house. This Saturday night. That's fine with you, then. Just think. All those people who think of you only as Summerfield's water commissioner. Well, Saturday night, you'll have a chance to show them what you really are. <laughs> <laughs> Margie, Leroy, what'll it be? I'll have a strawberry soda, Mr. Peavy. Oh, all righty. Me too. Only make mine a double. I'm trying to drown my sorrow. <laughs> well, I understand there's going to be a party in honor of your uncle. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Make mine a double, too. Well, <laughs> my gracious, you two look a little bit on the, on the glum side. What's the matter? Is there something wrong? 
Mr. Peavy, can we ask your advice on something? Well, certainly, Leroy. Go right ahead. Well, ask him. Well, if you tried to help a person, only you ended up by hurting the person, what would you do? Hmm, well, then it'd depend on what I did. Well, suppose you sort of played a trick on him. Well, I mean the person, and the person didn't know about it. And what you did was going to make the person the laughing stock, which is exactly what you didn't want to happen in the first place. Hmm, I see. Well, I think I'd just go to the person and tell him the truth. You would? Yes, I would. I see. But Mr. Peavy, can I ask you another question? Well, certainly, Leroy. Go ahead. What? If you didn't tell the truth, what would your second choice be? <laughs> well, Marjorie, Leroy, <laughs> glad to see you got your appetites back. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gibbsley. Are you coming to my party Saturday night? Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. I understand you're going to read a poem. <laughs> That's right, Phoebe. I think we'll go home, Uncle. Yo, wait a minute. Stay here a minute and I'll drive you home. I want to pick up a few little things from Mr. Peavy. Oh, for the party? Uh, sort of. I'm writing a few extra little poems to kind of fill out the evening. You know, make it a recital. I, uh, just need a handful of little supplies. <laughs> Supplies right down here. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Now you two run along. I want to get right down to work. Leroy, Marjorie, I can't write poetry with you breathing down my neck. We have something to talk to you about. Yeah, we want to tell you something. Oh, very well, Leroy. What is it? Well, tell him. Uncle Mort, we did something awful, something you may never forgive us for. Oh, come now. You couldn't do anything I wouldn't forgive you for. Remember the other night when you wrote the poem to Amy? My beautiful darling with the big blue eyes. <laughs> How could I forget? Well, when you were out of the room, we copied another poem and substituted it for yours. Oh, well, that's all. The poem Amy read and thought was so beautiful wasn't yours at all. It was written by someone else. Yeah, she thinks you're Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Well, that's not... <laughs> you mean? That's what we mean. Well, Annie. Yeah. Leroy, Marjorie. Yes. I'll never forgive you for this. Oh, but Uncle Mark, we were only. Then at the party, Amy will expect me to read. Oh my goodness, Marjorie, where is that poem? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Hmm. Hmm, I see. Are you still mad at us? Mad at you? We were only trying to help. Oh, I'm not mad at you. I just want to ask you a question. Yes. Do you really think this is good as the poem that I wrote? <laughs> not that it's a bad poem, it just has no zip. Well, you don't mean... If Amy was impressed by this, she'll faint when she reads mine. You're not going to go ahead and read your poem to, to Amy to all those other people. Oh, not only that, but several others equally as good, I hope. Now, you two run along. Your old uncle has to woo the poetic muse. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Medley, I oh. like it. It's a large one, isn't it? Oh, I can't tell you how I'm looking forward to hearing your poems, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. Tell me, are you partial to iambic pentameter, or do you prefer free verse? You, well, I've always been pretty free with my ver... Oh, <laughs> oh, glad to see you. Yeah, glad to see you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, good evening, Miss Miller. I'm so glad you could come, Mr. Peavy. Thank you. Hey, looks like you've got quite a turnout. You must be surprised to discover your old friend is a devotee of grace and beauty. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Good evening, children. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Hi. I can't stand it. Hey, I've got an idea. What? Let's start a fire. Oh, boy. <laughs> that must be Miss Barnaby. Miss Barnaby, it is my great honor to present Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. How do you do? It's nice to meet you, Miss Barnaby. Amy's told me so much Amy, about you. Amy, would you please show me to my seat? I detest small talk. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? As you all know, we're gathered here tonight to pay honor to a brilliant new poet. He will read several of his latest works, with one exception. The exception being a poem written to a friend and omitted because of its personal nature. So, without further ado, I present Summerfield's own Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my first selection this evening is entitled The Summerfield Reservoir. <clears throat> I've uh, seen the wonders of the world. I've traveled near and far. But the greatest sight I've ever seen is the Summerfield <laughs> Reservoir. <laughs> The uh, next poem I call Our Little Friend the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I shout out so gladly, Welcome to you, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> said the wind as it went whistling by woo, 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 cried the clouds as they sat in the sky <laughs> That concludes my selections for this evening. <laughs> if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Oh, uh, Mrs. Smedley? Are you going to serve any refreshments? <laughs> There'll be refreshments in the dining room as soon as we're finished here. Halt. I wish to say something. Oh. I wish to comment on Mr. Gildersleeve's poems. Here it comes. It should be obvious to everyone here that Mr. Gildersleeve is the most brilliant new talent to rise on the poetry horizon in 25 years. His poems sound simple, but let that not deceive you. Beneath those crude lines lies the imagination of true genius. We may well have watched the launching of a new age in poetry, uh, the primitive age. <laughs> and I, for one, deem it a privilege to have been present at the birth of a new era. All hail Throckmorton B. Gildersleeve. Thank you. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Good night. Mrs. Good night. You were so wonderful. Well, thank <laughs> Good you. Night. Good night, Amy. Good night, Marjorie. Good night, Uncle Mort. I'm so happy for you. Can you be home soon, Uncle? Well, if I were you, Leroy, I wouldn't wait up for me. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Miss Miller. Did you get me sleep? Good night, Phoebe. Well, Amy, here we are, alone at last. Um, Ron Burton, I'm so proud of you. But I have a confession to make. Oh? No matter what Mrs. Barnaby says, I still like the first one you sent me best. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. <laughs> but maybe it's because it was written just for me. I'll never show it to anyone, Throckmorton. Good. Oh, there you are. Oh, Mrs. Barnaby, I thought you'd gone home. Wild horses couldn't drag me away from here. I have so much to talk to you about. <laughs> Amy, you might as well go to bed. This is liable to take hours. Dr. Morton, what do you think about Browning? Browning? Yes, Robert Browning. Oh, Robert Browning. He's wonderful, too. <laughs> 